still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal to minister his grace. No work too hard for him in faith receive from him. Be still for the power of place. Please be seated. Welcome on Sunday, May 21, 2023, to the worship service here in Farringdon Church, Brantford, Ontario. We're glad you're here, and we're glad you're here tuning in. Now, you know it's a long weekend uh, because some are away. And those that remain divide into two groups. The kids are smiling, an extra day off school, and the adults are grimacing. <laughs> Not for that reason. Uh, those who were out working yesterday in the garden, they're feeling it today. So, right, Dave? <laughs> but we're glad you're here. And the Lord's given us this time to worship him and to enjoy each other's company. Let's highlight some announcements that are coming up. On Wednesday at 12 p.m., there's a trustees meeting. On Friday, 6.30, there's a family movie night, but it's for all singles, families, seniors, it doesn't matter. We're gonna have fun watching this comedy together come at 6.30. We're looking forward to next Sunday, and we're going to have two baptisms. Now, the ladies are asked to sign up for their lunch, which is on the 31st of May, Wednesday, May 31st, uh, to get an accurate count, so you can sign that in the narthex. Uh, this coming Saturday is May 27th, and at 7 p.m., you'll see a Brant County Singers concert happening. And that's near the end of your bulletin, if you can attend. You'll see some from our church in that, in that concert. Also, we want to give our congratulations and our prayers for these people celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. So first of all, Ethan Meyerink tomorrow, Dave Kennedy on the 23rd, Dave Kirk on the 24th, McKenna Butler and Olivia Perry on the 28th. Happy birthday. And then happy anniversary to the Lovekins. We uh, announced it last week so you'd have advance notice for them, but also then this week, the 24th, are the Holy Homes, Greg and Annette. And we congratulate Greg and Annette for becoming grandparents. They finally did it. Jack, Jack Alexander Holy Homes was born this week, was it four days ago? Four or five? Okay. And he's healthy, and mom's healthy, and the family's happy. Good news. Come on up. Caitlin. Uh, for our treats after the, at the end of service, they're going to be served in here, but the weather's perfect. If you want to join me outdoors, do that. Get your stuff in here, come outdoors. If you don't want the little, the little breeze, then you just stay indoors. We're giving people choice today. Good morning, everyone. So our midweek programs are meeting as usual this week with junior youth on Monday from 6.30 till 8. And kids, no, you're right. It's a holiday tomorrow. We're not meeting as usual. Reese is like, no, no. Uh, kids, stay home. Hang out with mom and dad. Have some fun at home. Um, and then Tuesday, we are meeting as usual from 6 till 7.30. And because we're missing Monday, we're having our movie night together on Friday. And uh, I just want to reiterate, everybody can come. 
You don't have to be a typical family unit, grandparents, great-grandparents, even if you don't have any kids in your life and just want to come out and hang out with our Farringdon family. It would be a great chance to connect on Friday night. We are also still taking registrations for our Twists and Turns VBS. You'll see that. It's yellow and pink promo at the back of your bulletin. And that's running from August 14th to 18th. Uh, so we're moving it from July into August. And I need help. So if you know teenagers who want to get some volunteer hours or you want to hang out with us, we're changing it up a little bit. And instead of having a science station, we're going to be having a missions station. So if anybody here has a heart for missions, we're going to be doing a few little service projects throughout the week. Uh, and I'm looking for a few adults to help. Uh, one day we're packaging up soup to bless a family member. Another day we're, we're making something cute to bless parents and grandparents in our lives. Uh, so if you're interested in helping out in that way as well, I'd encourage you to connect with me. And I think, oh, and on June 4th, the Christian Education Committee will be having a meeting. So if you're on the Christian Ed Committee, I'd encourage you to save that date as well. Psalm 1 is found in your Pew Bible, page 466 in the Old Testament. Anna's going to read. Psalm 1. Happy is the one who does not take the counsel of the wicked for a guide or follow the path that sinners tread, or take his seat in the company of scoffers. His delight is in the law of the Lord. It is his meditation day and night. He is like a tree planted beside water channels. It yields its fruit in season, and its foliage never fades. So he too prospers in all he does. The wicked are not like this. Rather, they are like chafe driven by the wind. When judgment comes, therefore, they will not stand firm, nor will sinners in the assembly of the righteous. The Lord watches over the ways of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Acts chapter 17 can be found on page 121 in the New Testament, 121. And I'll start at verse 10 of Acts 17. As soon as darkness fell, the members of the congregation sent Paul and Silas off to Berea. And on arrival, they made their way to the synagogue. The Jews in Berea were more fair-minded than those at Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness, studying the scriptures every day to see whether it was true. Many of them, therefore, became believers. So did a fair number of Gentile women so did a fair number of Gentiles, and women of standing as well as men. But when the Thessalonian Jews learned that the word of God had now been proclaimed by Paul in Berea, they followed him there to stir up trouble and rouse the rabble. At once, the members of their congregation sent Paul down to the coast, while Silas and Timothy both stayed behind. Paul's escort brought him as far as Athens and came away with instructions for Silas and Timothy to rejoin him with all speed. And this is the word of the Lord. Gospel reading is Matthew chapter 13, 
That's found on page 12. Jesus said to them, Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word that tells of the kingdom, but fails to understand it, the evil one comes and carries off what has been sown in his heart. That is the seed sown along the footpath. Now the seed sown on rocky ground stands for the person who hears the word and accepts it at once with joy. But it strikes no root in him, and he has no staying power. When there is trouble or persecution on account of the word, he quickly loses faith. The seed sown among thistles represents the person who hears the word, but worldly cares and the false glamour of wealth choke it, and it becomes barren. But the seed sown on good soil is the person who hears the word and understands it, and then bears fruit, which yields a hundredfold or sixtyfold or thirtyfold. The Gospel of Christ. We're going to sing a couple of Bible verses here. Seek ye first, and then ask, and it shall be given unto you. And on that second verse, we'll have all the youth join Caitlin up here at the front. the 
kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And it shall be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Well, good morning. So let's see how many people did gardening yesterday. Any gardeners in here? Any gardeners out here? Any gardeners here? You did on Mother's Day. All right. Yeah. So May long weekend is a weekend that people often do a lot of gardening. And one of the verses we heard today is about gardening. And I have with me today a vegetable. What kind of vegetable is this? Potato. It's a potato. Maya's sitting here going, why do you have a potato? Well, let me tell you. Jasper, can you hold that for me? And Reese, can you maybe hold this one for me? So we've got potatoes. What does a potato look like? It's what, brown? It has dents in it. Do you guys know what those little kind of blemishes or dents on them are called? Do you know what they're called? No. Do you guys know what they're called? They're called an eye. Okay? And when a potato is planted, in order for it to grow, they'll cut the potato and they'll plant a piece with a little eye on it. And then what happens is under the ground, that eye will start to grow roots. And on those roots, what comes but more potatoes? So Jasper, if I took this potato and went and threw it in the parking lot outside, okay. would it grow? No. Why not? Because it's not buried. Because it's not buried. That's right. Now what if I took it out back, put it on the grass, and put a little bit of dirt on top, then would it grow? No. No. Why not? Because it's, it's not buried. Some animal might come and dig it up, right, and eat it. Yeah. You have to dig a deep hole, put the potato in, and then bury it all back up, right? And in our Bible verse, Jesus uses fruit or seeds to teach us what we should do with our hearts. So this potato needs deep, rich soil to grow, right? Yeah. And not just to grow, but to produce other potatoes, right? And Jesus uses that idea to help us understand that we need to plant our hearts in good soil. He doesn't mean we're going to take our heart out and put it in dirt. That's not what he means, right? But rather, he means that our hearts need to be focused on good things. And the Bible verse we hear says that it needs to be focused on Scripture and on the Bible. And when our hearts are focused on good things like that, then they can produce good fruit. And that means that we can teach others about God. We can lead others toward him. We can be good examples. But we have to have our hearts in good soil first. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to go on down to Sunday school. So if you guys want to repeat after me, we're going to close our eyes. We're going to clap our hands so they're not distracted. And you're going to repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God help, us to hear your word help us to hear your word and understand your ways. Help us plant our lives, us plant our lives in, your word, in your word so we may produce, so we may produce good, fruit. good fruit. Amen.
You don't want to play it? Okay. Oh, one more time. No, it's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> If you've been following the news about artificial intelligence, but the experts in that field are telling us it's about to take over the world. They're sounding the alarm. One of them, called the godfather of AI, named Jeff Hinton, he just quit his role at Google so he could talk about the dangers of AI and not have any conflict of interest. He says the biggest danger with AI is its ability to spread lies under the guise of science, research, medicine, or government policy. I don't know if you've tried this software yet, but you can combine facts and stats and pictures and videos and produce something that is totally fake, but looks totally real. I saw a video someone made of Joe Biden giving a press conference at the White House, announcing that World War III has begun, and so a mandatory military draft of all, you, of all men ages 18 to 30 is about to begin. Totally fake but look totally real. Jeff Hinton says, the days of being able to trust the news are over. He says that because of AI, most people will not be able to distinguish what is true anymore. Okay, friends, there's a scary thought for today. It's why, more than ever, we need Bereans. That's my title, we need Bereans. Why we need Bereans? Of course, we need to ask then, what is a Berean? Well, we heard that name in Acts chapter 17 that I read. I'll just refresh your memory. It says, Paul and Silas arrived in Berea, and went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Berean Jews had greater character than the Jews in Thessalonica. For the Bereans received Paul eagerly, and they studied the scriptures daily to see if what Paul said was true. And as a result, many of them believed. So what's a Berean? Someone who lives in Berea, where's that? Northern Greece, Macedonia. But actually, if you look on a map today, they've changed the spelling slightly. They call themselves the Bereans with a V. But historically, they were called Bereans. Now, I've come across this name in Canada actually quite a few times. I know of a Berean Bible church and a Berean Baptist church, two different towns. I know of a Berean Bible camp. There's a, a publisher that's called Berean, and the magazine they produce is called The Berean. I know of a church they call their adult Bible study group The Bereans. So they'll announce the, the Bereans are meeting Tuesday at 7. <laughs> Why do we need Bereans in Canada and in Brantford? Well, Paul goes to preach to this town called Berea, to his fellow Jews in the synagogue. That's what he always did. And what did he preach to them? God has sent his Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, to die on a cross for us, and to rise from the dead for our salvation. 
When we trust in him, God will grant us eternal life and live within us by the Holy Spirit. That was the gospel, the good news that Paul preached everywhere. In Thessalonica, some said, we don't want to hear this blasphemy. Get out of here. They kicked Paul and Silas out. They had to leave the city secretly at night because a mob had formed to try and kill Paul and Silas. So they didn't take kindly to this good news, this gospel message of Jesus in Thessalonica. Now, I've said before, cancel culture is quite rampant today, but it's nothing new. All throughout history, as long as somebody has stood up and told the truth, there have been people on the other side saying, shut up! Don't say that anymore. You're wrong. We hate you. We're going to get rid of you. And that's what's happening in Acts. But when Paul goes to Berea, it says they welcomed him. They gave him the pulpit. And when he was done speaking, they didn't boo. They didn't clap. They said, we're not sure about this message you're bringing. This is new to us. We're going to need some time to think about it. And so they studied the scriptures daily to see if what Paul said was true. They don't get violent and go cancel culture like the Thessalonians, nor do they accept Paul and his message with open arms. They're wisely skeptical. And they're biblical. They say, Paul, we're not going to believe a word you say unless it lines up with this book. This book called God's Word. And that's why verse 11 says they had greater character than the Thessalonians. Uh, some Bible translations use the word wiser. They were wiser than the Thessalonians. Our translation said they were more fair-minded. I like that. They were open-minded. And that's why we need more Bereans today, friends. Because being fair-minded and being open-minded and being willing to have an honest debate about something that is debatable, it's gone out the window. Now if you don't believe the, the party line or the mainstream narrative they're selling, you're automatically labeled a bigot, a danger to society, someone we must silence and get rid of. I don't know if you heard about 16-year-old Josh Alexander. Suspended from his Catholic high school in Renfrew, Ontario for saying there are only two genders. His teacher and his principal disagreed and said you're speaking hate speech which is not tolerated, so get out of our school. All he did was read Genesis chapter 1, which says, And God created male and female. This is the Bible you teach us, right? Well, it says there are only two genders. And so he was suspended. He goes back to school after his suspension, and they call the police to arrest him for trespassing. Now this is over news headlines across North America. Strangely, not mentioned much in Canada. So he now has a criminal record. 
and is not allowed at his Catholic school for saying what is true. I've heard much nonsense preached from different pulpits. Stuff that some people say, oh, it must be true, because that's a reverend saying it on a Sunday morning from an open Bible. I'll give you a few examples of what I've heard. Jesus was a Baptist. No, he wasn't. He was a Jew, and he was a Nazarene. One said, Jesus was stinking rich, and that's why we should be too. How do you know Jesus wasn't stinking rich? How would you answer that person? I'd say then, well, what did Jesus mean when he said, the Son of Man has no place to lay his head? He has no home to go to. One minister said that Jesus was a homosexual in love with John, which is why he called him the beloved disciple. Another said, no, Jesus was a heterosexual married to Mary Magdalene. Well, which one's right? They're both reverends. And the answer is neither is right. How do we know? Because we have what God has clearly recorded in the Bible for us. It is our standard for belief, doctrine, lifestyle. The Bereans said, we're not going to just take what you say, Paul, because you're some apostle. We're going to study the scriptures every day to see if it's true or not. You know, I love that Caitlin runs a Bible-based program for our youth. Why do I love that? Because it is only God's word in our lives that will produce good fruit. That's what Jesus said in the parable of the sower. The one who receives his word and acts on it will produce a crop of, or a harvest of 30, 60, 100 fold. So John comes home and he says, Sunday evening, I got homework to do. Well, John, tomorrow's Monday. It's a day off school. No, I got church homework to do. What? They're giving out church homework now? I got to check into this. Sure enough, he's got five Bible verses to memorize from Romans, all talking about who Jesus is. He does that assignment. And then his teacher gives him another one. He says, here's a monthly chart. Write on each day what Bible verse you read. Dad, I didn't do my Bible reading today. I've got to get it done before bedtime. All right, son, I can't argue with that. We have a Caitlin who's saying we need Bereans today, and we need them in our kids who are constantly being bombarded by half-truths and outright lies. How will they know? How will they discern? Unless God's word is in their hearts, speaking truth to their minds. Psalm 11.3 says, when the foundation is destroyed, society crumbles. And we're watching society crumble around us. Because there's no foundation of truth anymore. And churches are just as vulnerable. Thank God that he has kept faring in church on track these 190 years. We turn 190 in October. How come this church hasn't fallen to 
uh, heresy and scandal like others have. I believe it's because we've had some Bereans in our midst, and we still do. People who say, I'm not just taking what you say at, at face value, preacher. I got a brain, and I got a Bible. And I'm going to make sure that what you say lines up with what God is saying. Swiss theologian Karl Barth used to say that the wise Christian will have a newspaper in one hand and a Bible in the other. So that everything we read from the news, from the editors, can be weighed against the truth. Now he wrote that in German in, in 1935 when Germany was flooding the newspapers with propaganda, outright lies. He said, don't ever read your newspaper in one hand unless you've got your Bible in the other. That's good advice for almost 100 years later. Today we'd update it, I'd say, don't read your Twitter feed unless you've got your Bible open beside it. Don't watch CNN unless you've got the scriptures ready to compare what you're hearing. The Berean way is to say, I'm going to research this for myself before I believe it or reject it. Now one instance where it's helpful to know the Bible and to be able to compare it to what's being said in the media today is just on the matter of climate change. For the last 60 years, we've been hearing that the ice caps at you know, each pole are going to melt. And when that happens, the whole world's going to be flooded. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to stop driving our cars, and we need to go electric, and we need to pay more taxes, and all these things we have to do to stop this next worldwide flood. Al Gore famously predicted that by 2013, we would see this global flood begin. And governments spread this fear every chance they get. Now, what does God say? Well, God says in Genesis 2 that we are to rule over what he's made. We're to take care of his planet. So should we be concerned about climate change? Yes. We should be concerned about anything that harms this earth. But then what does God say in Genesis 9, not long after that? He says, I will never flood the earth again. And if you want proof, just look in the sky and see the rainbow I made. Because that will remind you, I'll never flood the earth again. So who am I going to believe? Al Gore or the creator and sustainer of this planet? It's just one small example of why we need Bereans who say, wait a minute, let me take what you're saying and compare it to what God has said. Then I'll give you my response. Bereans aren't driven by fear. They're not tricked by half-truths. They're not swindled by salespeople. No, Bereans are careful, they're skeptical, wisely skeptical, and they're thoroughly biblical. That, my friends, is why we need more Bereans in Brantford today, and I'm calling on you to become one. 
We don't have our group Bible study right now. It just ended. You're going to have to wait for the fall for this group to get back together. But that doesn't mean we don't open our Bibles every day on our own at home and say, God, help me make sense of it. Help me to see and stand for your truth in this world that is increasingly becoming filled with lies. This is our prayer. Amen. I thank you if you're able to give an offering. The plate is at each door. And I know many give during the week electronically. God bless you for that. And some can't give because they are struggling. And so we want to take a moment and pray for the offering and those who it will help and, and affect this week. Let's bow in prayer. Lord God, you've been so generous to us. We have more than we need. And we're concerned for those who don't have what they need. So we pray that you would help them and be generous to them and you would use our giving to make some difference. Bless this offering. We commit it to you for Jesus' sake. Amen. The offertory is called Footsteps of Jesus. All who can, please stand to sing this doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures. 
creatures here behold. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The final hymn is 405. My hope is built on nothing less. Now to the one who can keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory, joyful and above reproach, to the only God who is our Savior, be glory and majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is before all time, now and forever. Amen. be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. Go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. Know he will guide you in all you do. Go So all the world can see, God will be there, watching from above, Go 